Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help falling in love with you. Oh, you thought that was for you? No, 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 I'm not serenading you. That, that was that was for that over there. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for the confusion. I know you fell in love with that. Also, pretend there was music to it and it sounded really good, okay? Just don't roast my singing, okay? You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. This video is sponsored by me and my protein donut company and my weight loss support group. For more information, click the links below in my description and thank you all for the support. Are these shoes the 1950s? I tried to dress up to fit the theme. They're so freak. Oh, is the price tag still on it? Nope, just the size. They're so cute though, yeah, who wear these? What cosplays can we do with these? Hello and welcome to the channel and today's deep dive. In today's topic, we are diving into Elvis Presley. Before we start though, please hit the subscribe button and leave a comment to help me with the algorithm. Now, let's dive in. So unless you are someone who attains absolutely zero culture, you have at least heard of Elvis Presley or at least seen references. Like if you're someone that tells me you've gone to Vegas and you don't know who Elvis is. Viva, viva Las Vegas. I'm going to think things about you and say them behind your back and probably to your face. The man had a very unique look, the hair, the outfit, the voice. But before his name was famous, Elvis was just a Mississippi boy born on January 1935. There would have been two little Elvises or Elvis. He was supposed to be a twin, but his brother Jesse was unfortunately a stillborn baby. Elvis came from a very poor family where his father, Vernon, worked a series of odd jobs and in 1938 was sentenced to not one, not two, but three years in prison for forging a four dollar check. I take it that's a lot of money in the 1930s. Fortunately though for him, he spent less than a year, quite a bit in my opinion, but it's different times. But anyway, Elvis had a very good relationship as far as we know with his parents and had an extremely special connection with his mama and God. He attended the Assembly of God Church with his parents where gospel music became an important influence for him. Actually, speaking about inspiration, according to many, Elvis actually got his voice from a man named Otis Blackwell. Is it true that when he heard you, you performing the material that he would imitate your style uh, when he recorded the song? Well, they did come out very close to the demos that we did. Yeah, and uh, did you did you feel funny about him imitating so closely what you were putting on tape or, or not? Well, no, I, I felt a little funny the first time, then after he sold four million, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it takes the sting out of it, I guess, sure. Otis Blackwell was a songwriter and also, according to him, taught Elvis how to sing. And Elvis just copied exactly how Otis was doing it. Here's a clip of the original Elvis voice. Presley received his first guitar as a gift from his mother on his 11th birthday in 1946, and then received his first taste of fame after entering a talent show, which he won at his Humes High School in Memphis. After graduating in 1953, he worked a series of multiple jobs while working on his musical career. Eventually, he did his first demo record, which is known as Sun Studios. And eventually, a man named Sam Phillips, the owner of the record label, saw something special in Elvis. And Sam was obviously right. That's All Right was Presley's first single in 1954. Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right. It didn't do exactly that well, but it did reach number four in Memphis, and that was a great start. And as you know, 
things turned out extremely well. Well, for the most part, when it came to his career, he became a national superstar. Everyone knew who Elvis was. The hair, the clothes, he was called the king of fashion, and of course, the voice. They were all very iconic. But something else Elvis was known for was his extremely interesting and odd diet. And I have never related to Elvis Presley more than when I heard about his very strange, fat-filled, artery-clogging American diet. In 2022, even though we have something called body positivity and po fat positivity on the rise, most celebrities need to be slim and trim and look better than the average American. To do so, many of these Hollywood stars partake in, you know, that trigger word, diets, where they have to watch what they eat, count some calories. They might even exclude just whole food groups, but Elvis was different. He didn't exclude anything. She's my daughter, he do what, what she's my were a staple in the king of fashions diet. Well, some of his favorite foods included meat, peanut butter, and fried foods. In fact, it's said that Elvis ate like a mammoth. Mammoths are pretty ma mammothized, mammothies. You know what I'm talking about. A mammoth is huge. So a average sized man eating like a mammoth, he had to be putting it down and he did. Supposedly, Elvis would intake around 10 to 12,000 calories a day. Honey, Elvis was doing the 10,000 challenges way long before it was cool on YouTube. Now you're saying impossible especially if you're from a different country. Impossible. No one eats that amount daily. No, 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 it's very possible. For Binger, and when you're eating an American diet, it's actually, in fact, very easy. Take it from me, I would know. I put down that much food. It's very, very simple. The most favorite Elvis cuisine that he enjoyed is the peanut butter, bacon, and banana sandwich. He combined not one, not two, but three high calorie, super dense foods and slapped those bitches between two slices of bread and said, boom dinner or snack. And honestly, that would never fill me up. It's such a small amount of volume. I would need two or four of them or five and some water to help fill my stomach up. And if I need two to four or five of them being five, two, how much do you think Elvis would need to feel satiated? Spoiler. A lot. Another favorite of Elvis was Fool's Gold Loaf. It's basically the remix of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on steroids, whichever one, take your pick. It's just a big ass sandwich. Fool's Gold Loaf consists of a hollowed out loaf of sourdough bread stuffed with an entire jar of peanut butter. Already sounds good. And uh, that's like 10,000 calories already just from the peanut butter. Uh, me and Elvis would be having some fun back then in a day. I mean, just eat. That's it. The sandwich already sounds amazing. I've eaten a whole tub of peanut butter by itself. Let me continue with the sandwich. The Fool's Gold Loaf consists of a hollowed out sourdough bread covered in butter, first of all, then stuffed with all the peanut butter, a jar of peanut butter, and then an entire jar of grape jam. And then we're not done yet, a pound of bacon. Not done yet, fried. So my question is, uh, who, who out here would eat it? Hmm? Raise your hand. Me. Elvis was obsessed with this type of food, specifically the sandwich. He would fly 800 miles in his private jet just to get one of these glorious artery clogging fat filled sandwiches because apparently they were that good. And he was definitely extremely addicted to sugar and fat. He's flying 800 miles in a private jet just to get a sandwich. Also, couldn't he make that at home? I know I could make that at home. In fact, I did. Just kidding. We're not panning to another scene. I didn't do it. I don't need any other type of food for me to be obsessed with. I already know that it's good. But this sandwich was said to be around 8,000 calories and 42,000 calories, which is a big ass range. But all you need to know is that it's not something you want to eat on a regular basis unless you want a gut and a heart attack. What, Yoshi? Oh, yeah. Well, We'll get there. It's fine. Anywho, a man named James Gregory who wrote a biography on Elvis made an announcement for any potential lovers that were interested in dating Elvis. Yep, so if you were interested in Elvis back then, all you would need to know is notes for his future wife. Elvis loves enormous breakfast, complete with sausage, bacon, eggs, fried potatoes, home-baked rolls, and coffee. He has a tremendous appetite at breakfast. His wife should never develop elegant or expensive taste. So in other words, 
Get your ass in the kitchen, ladies. But in reality, anyone who dated or married Elvis wouldn't need to cook at all. The man had a private chef. Mary Jenkins Langston said for breakfast, he'd have homemade biscuits. Omelet, egg omelet. Sausage patties. And cream of wheat. Right. Fresh orange juice. Mm -hmm. Well, he just, he loved That's breakfast. And sometimes, fried bacon. He knew how to start the day off the American way. Elvis had a high obsession with bacon and it's good, but he seems to have it in every meal. Breakfast, fried, lunch, and a sandwich, fried, and for dinner, bacon wrapped meatballs. But wait, there's more. And then he would wash it all down with water. No, <laughs> come on. You know I'm lying. Some type of soda pop. So this man had a food addiction, a binge eating problem, and most likely, a sugar addiction. And it's no wonder his slim figure became a very large, plump, and round figure. You want some light. You know, someone said the world's a stage and each must play a part. But for today's standards, curvy. Oh, wait, he's a guy. So fat. Something I never knew is that Elvis Presley, like many back then or today at any point in time, would actually try to lose weight. I was under the impression that he was perfectly fine with being obese, but no, he did try. He wanted to lose weight, he wanted to be healthier, but like many people, at least many Americans, he didn't know how to do it in a healthy way. He wanted it fast and he wanted it very easy. And usually when people want those three things, what do they do? Oh yeah, you guessed it a fad diet. Elvis is reported to have tried to slim down by eating nothing but jelly made of his favorite black cherry soda and bananas for weeks. Once again, sugar addiction. His blood sugar would have been spiking throughout the day and then he would be crashing throughout the day. If that's all he's eating, his whole diet, 100%, if that's what he stuck to, is completely sugar. That's not good. He also got a little Disney inspiration and did something called the Sleeping Beauty Diet. So with this diet, you get put in a coma. So you can lose weight, you know, while you sleep, Elvis. But when you wake up, you're going to eat the fried peanut butter sandwich with fried bacon again. Imagine how hungry you will be after you wake up. Your binge eating disorder is not just gonna go away. And when you think about it, you got taught nothing. You didn't get to, you, you didn't learn about portion control. You didn't learn about food, what sugar does to you. You didn't learn to drink water instead of pop. You learned absolutely nothing except sleep. And you know what? This diet was recommended to Elvis by a doctor. Woo! You body positive warriors complain about doctors promoting a balanced diet, lean meats, healthy fats, and complex carbs. Y'all, these doctors say, you know what? We'll knock your ass out, put you in a coma. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll wake up thin. What a wild time. Fortunately though, he didn't last very long. He ended up falling out of his hospital bed, woke himself up and decided, uh, let's not do that again. <laughs> Unfortunately though, no diet ever stuck. And the king of rock and roll continued on with the same lifestyle of bacon wrap meatballs, deep fried peanut butter bacon sandwiches and whatever else he could get his hands on that's deep fried. The same man that made teenage girls hysterical with his movie star looks, catchy songs and gyrating pelvis during the 1950s was suffering from declining health in the 1970s and was reportedly in an immense amount of pain on a daily basis. In 1973, Elvis divorced his wife, Priscilla Presley. He developed a dependence on prescription drugs to get through the day and continued with the same performing schedule, turning to food for comfort from his personal issues, which obviously increased his weight and his body was swollen. He struggled to sleep. He was said to be constipated and everything just hurt daily. So, I don't know about you, but that fried bacon, banana, and peanut butter sandwich don't sound too good right now. Also, the fact that there's a whole movement saying that you should just eat whatever you want all the time 
and weight has nothing to do with anything that you're feeling, you know, when it comes to your body, is as wild as that Sleeping Beauty diet they recommended to Elvis to lose weight. According to the book, he really needed a lot of medication to achieve any form of sleep, and he was taking things like Valium to achieve sleep because he literally just couldn't sleep at all. So I don't know if it's completely the food, I mean, he was performing, he was probably stressed out, but the constant binges, the sugar spikes, the traveling, the performing, all of the medications, the zero sleep had to take a toll on him. The next quote from the book really was interesting to me and reminds me so much of the body positive or fat positive, I don't know. Both are pretty much the same thing to me, but more towards, you know, Tess Holiday, Lizzo, you know, the top fat people, the, the, the leaders of the fat positive or body positive fat acceptance type movement. In the last few years of his life, he was very aware of how ill he was and he wasn't honest with everyone about that. He was also surrounded with a lot of yes people. And you have to remember that this was a time when people really didn't talk about their health like they do now. And he's the head of his whole organization. No one was going to question him. Huh? Sound familiar? You think people are gonna go tell Lizzo, tell Holiday, who really, who want to keep their job or want to be in that certain circle to try and get fat fame? Uh, hey girl, you ever think maybe you eat too much? Maybe you got too much body fat? Maybe this whole fat positive thing is actually really bad for your health? and you should stop. I don't think people in their circle are going to ever say that. They got too much power, too much fame, too much clout, too much money. And people want that, so of course they're gonna be around yes people. And then I think sometimes, some people, not saying that Elvis was, he clearly said that he just wasn't feeling good, but a lot of these other people of today's standards, maybe their brain gets a little distorted because they're around so many people that constantly say, yes, 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 you're fine, you're beautiful, look at you, you're healthy, this, this, and that. And then they start really thinking it. And maybe that's why some of these people in these movements, when they see someone like me who say a no, or they meet someone that's like, uh, wait, oh, you guys are for what? <laughs> Health at every size. Now that's not real and they flip the fuck out. The other thing that I found interesting is that they said they're in, in an era where nobody talks about health and you see the connection there? Back then they didn't really talk about health and in these fat positive, body positive groups, it's fat phobic to talk about health. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting to the end here. And if you're part of the fat positive or body positive movement, you might wanna pay attention. The fifth tour for Elvis Presley of the year comprised of 10 cities, 10 shows, and in all 10 days. At his last concert, which took place in Indiana, Presley was quoted as saying, my body really hurts, but no matter what, I'm going out there tonight and giving everything I have, no matter what. A few months after the grueling tour where he said his whole body was in pain, but just has to keep doing it for family and you know friends, on Aug and of course fans. Well, on August 16th, 1977, Presley was found unconscious in his Graceland mansion. Good evening. Elvis Presley died today. He was 42. Apparently it was a heart attack. He was found at his home in Memphis, not breathing. His road manager tried to revive him. He failed. A hospital tried to revive him. It failed. His doctor pronounced him dead at three o'clock this afternoon. A truly a very sad story and a great reminder that there is no such thing as health at every size. Many people from the body positive community and fat positive community says, you know, eat what your body tells you. I'm pretty sure Elvis's body was telling him to eat deep fried peanut butter bacon sandwiches. So sometimes we should not listen to what our bodies are telling us to do. We should probably listen to our brain and maybe a doctor, but not a 1970s doctor. A very unfortunate time back then because they really were not all about health. I talked to many of my older women who were from that time and they were like, yeah, people smoked, people drank, Nobody talks about health. All, all this stuff is so new. And they're a little jealous that we have, you know, conversations about health. So when I tell them about the fat positive movement, they're like, what the fuck? They, they were born in the wrong time. Go back to the 1950s and y'all can eat whatever you want and die. Anyway, this is also a very good reminder that overworking yourself can cause damage to your health as well. So sometimes you need a break and just to relax. Also, you might need a break from deep fried peanut butter banana sandwiches. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, you don't have to be a size two. Having big biceps are great to have to scare away all the boys, but not needed to be healthy. But health is very important. And your mental health is very important. And not overworking yourself is very important. But also, 
working hard is also important. It's all about balance. We don't need to do the extremes of everything. Being fat, being super thin, doing 10 shows in a, what, a week? This is what Elvis did. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. I now have to go eat something healthy and then follow up with something unhealthy because I'm all about balance. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Oh, by the way, these shoes are from Amazon. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums. I 